Hi everyone, it's Sunshine and welcome once more to my studio. Okay, so today we are swimming our way back into the wonderful minds of our authors. We are continuing on today with our six authors, six questions series. Our episode is all about creating characters. I am super excited for this episode because I love characters and I am really excited to see what our wonderful authors have to say about them too. So today's authors are Adrian Beck, Adam Wallace, Danica Patterson, Michelle Worthington, Mary Ann Pears and Meredith Costain. So let's get started today with Mary Ann. Take it away Mary Ann. Well, Characters are very interesting critters. Sometimes they come into my life fully formed. So I might begin reading, writing a story and I already know who that character is. Sometimes they are a mixture of people I know and a little bit of myself and then a little bit of somebody that I imagine. And in fact, I would say probably a lot of my characters are like that. Um, and sometimes I start writing a character and think, oh, I don't know them all that well. Um, I need to dig a little bit deeper here. So it's very actually easy to start thinking, start writing thinking that you know that character well and then finding out that you don't. So the way I go about making characters real for my readers is to make them real for me. So that might mean um, thinking, it might just mean thinking about where they've come from, you know, who their parents were, um, who their friends were, what they like, what they don't like, and importantly, how they react to certain things, because what your character believes in will determine how they react to situations. So um, that's the kind of thing that I sometimes have to dig deeper into. Um, and sometimes your character will just completely surprise you when you're writing a story. You think you know them and all of a sudden they do something they shouldn't. Um, and the other great thing is that I'll be sometimes deep in a story and a secondary character or a minor character will just pop up and like I, I know what they look like and what their name is and that's all and then somehow I have to find out more about them quickly because I'm already deep in the story so um, I love characters because when they become real to you they do take on a life of their own and hopefully they are then very convincing to the readers as well. You know a character you have to know absolutely everything about them that's like you've had to create this ma massive world for them and exactly know them inside and out. And I love that. That's cool. I have uh, one of my colleagues, my writer colleagues, is she always talks about writing the world from the character's eyes. Like, so she creates her world from yeah. her character's world view. So that's another kind of way that a lot of it's so instinctive, though, because you know, once you start putting together pieces of a character, a character's personality, some things become implicit. You know that mm. certain things are going to happen if they're like that, you know. Okay, so I actually start my stories with the character. Mm -hmm. And when I'm going out and doing school visits, that's what I recommend to kids. Always start with a really cool character. And I always like to think of what makes my character different or special? Because there can be a whole heap of books on unicorns or mermaids or bananas. But <laughs> what makes that particular banana different from all the other bananas in the books? And then I like to think about, okay, where is my character? And putting my character in a place. And then I've got to think about what is my character doing there? And just because my main character might be a banana, doesn't mean that it has to be in a fruit bowl. Maybe my banana could be in the city and my banana is an accountant. So I think starting with a character is actually really, really fun because then you can imagine this story all around it. And starting with a really cool character can maybe lead your story in a direction that you didn't expect because the character starts talking to you and tells you where they want to be in the story. Mm -hmm. 
I create characters uh, by paying attention or asking myself questions um, about five senses. That's sort of where I start with a lot of my characters. Um, so rather than what they look like or what they're doing, I'm sort of working from working from their point of view out and thinking, okay, what is this person smelling? What are they seeing? What are they feeling? Um, and sort of addressing sort of those things and weirdly a kind of more three-dimensional person will emerge when I break it down in that way quite often. Do you find it's more uh, physical characteristics or mental characteristics that you get out of that? What do you, What is it that you find after creating those five senses? Uh, probably a, a, I create a, when I pull from the five senses, I usually, I guess, bringing it back to before that answer, I usually start with an emotion, like my characters grow out of emotion first. And mm -hmm. so I need to use those five senses to sort of build in the world around them. So the environmental stuff, probably it helps me with the most. Um, and then once I've got the emotion of the character and this is where my background in child psychology comes out, <laughs> it always starts with how the child is feeling in my stories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, then so I start with the emotion I build the environment and then I can place things in that world that they are going to react to which tells me more about their characters when do you feel that a character is real enough uh, when I start oh I feel like a character is real enough when I start hearing their voice inside my head That's it's quite a lot about voices inside my head with my process <laughs> I think we're figuring out <laughs> How do I create characters? Well, characters for me are really the heart of a book and some people are really into plot or setting but for me the character is the driver of the story and I really can't write it until I know my character really well. So I spend a lot of time getting to know them. I have lots of conversations with them while I'm doing mundane things like the dishes, <laughs> weeding the garden, walking the dogs. Um, and I just find out about them. You know, what are they interested in? What do they like? What do they detest? Who their best friends are? Why they get on with them? Um, it's really a good idea to give them some kind of nemesis to bounce off. Um, and also to sort of work out beforehand why don't those two characters get on? What is there some event in their past life? So I spend a lot of time, what's their family like? All, all sorts of things like that. So I get to know them really well. Um, and then a name is really important for a character. I really can't start writing either until I've got their name. Um, I think a name can reflect about the sort of person that your character is and it might really suit them, a strong name for a strong character or a dreamy name for a dreamy character. However, sometimes it can work back the other way. They can, you know, it's like a boy called Sue. They can be <laughs> given, um, given a name that just is not them and maybe that's what the problem's going to be. When you know what, what your character really likes and dreams about, then you know what they really want and that will drive into your problem. So. If they really, really want something, and you've got to work out what that is, you're working out then what's stopping them from getting what they want, and there's your problem, and there's your story. And in fact, if you know your character well enough, ooh, this is my best tip, if you know your character really well, they'll write the story for you. I know a character's really real to me when I wake up in the morning and they're, they're talking to me or they, um, or I do something and I think, how would Ella react to that? And in fact, I become the character um, and, and I also know <laughs> the character is real to me when I don't want anybody to talk to me while I'm writing it because I'll get out of that sort of little character zone and um, yeah, they sort of take over you. I think, I think you'll find in with most writers they're putting a lot of themselves into their mm. characters, uh, and yeah, there's a little bit of a little bit of you, maybe from your childhood, maybe from now, whatever. Um, but certainly, if you start speaking like your character, um, that's actually another good point. It's good. It's good to give your characters little phrases or tags. You know who's talking without having to do a speech tag. You just know who it is because they're always going to say something like that. You know, whether it be wowzers or whatever you know that's your character oh that's lovely so every little book that we've got is a little bit of meredith in it oh yes <laughs>
create characters in so many different ways. Mm. Um, and I'm going to give you a few. I'm going to give you a few examples of how I do yeah, it. Please do. Now, when I did the Kick It to Nick series, and I made sure that our lead character Nick had to take on some crazy monster type characters uh, because he was playing footy on a cursed oval. Uh, I just decided, right, I need to come up with a different monster per book. How am I going to create these characters? So what I did is was I took things that I loved and mashed them together and hopefully, I think I did, created something new. <laughs> so <laughs> what I mean by that is, so there was one book called uh, The Footy Bots, okay? Mm -hmm. And so what they are is they're sort of like little uh, uh, robots that malfunction, they play footy. They were meant to be there to play footy like those robots oh, okay. do on um, YouTube, but they yes. malfunctioned and they destroyed the school. But <laughs> to get to that point, what I had to do was mash together two ideas that I loved. So I love gremlins. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I love Daleks from Doctor Who. And I thought, That's okay, amazing. if I smush those two together, what would I get? And so eventually we got footy bots. So you've got uh, little terrorizing little uh, monster, monstrous sort of robots that uh, take on the school and sort of try and cause chaos wherever they go. So I think one of my tips is for creating really exciting, interesting characters is think of the things you love, throw them together in an attempt to create something new. But another great way of creating characters is thinking about those comedic actors, particularly when you're writing comedy, comedic actors that you really love. Like, yeah, you know, totally. think of a Jim Carrey or, you know, think of, uh, you know, whoever is one of your favourites, like Steve Martin. But in particular, I love Rick Mail, okay? Oh. He was from The Young Ones and then he went on okay. to do a spin-off called Bottom. He was a legend. And I just thought to myself, what would he be like if he was a school kid? And suddenly you know aspects of that character through their work, but you've put them in a whole new context with a whole new challenges in their life and all that sort of thing. So suddenly you've sort of created this character which has been inspired by something that you really love, but you've put it in a different context. And once you start writing, whether you're throwing two ideas you love together or you're throwing a comic character into a different context and a different sort of body and, and age, once you start writing, those create characters start to become more real and then they take on a life of their own. So they're my two top tips for creating characters. Very good. Uh, what makes a character authentic to you? What do you think are some of the things that really you need to squish in there to make a character authentic? To make a character authentic, I just I think you just need to add a few layers to them. Because if you if you just have someone that turns up and they're like the bus driver and he turns up and says, Here's my bus, uh, I want to get on, let's have a lift. I mean, you've got the bus driver is obviously, he's woken up either on the wrong side of the bed or the right side of the bed. You know, he's got his own challenges. Maybe he's he spilt his coffee down the front of his, front of his uh, shirt or whatever it might be, I don't know. But you've just got to make sure you add layers to them. None of them can be just servicing the story. Even if it doesn't come into the story all that much, there's only just a hint of it, you've got to feel like these characters all have their own backstory. They're all living their own lives. They're not necessarily the secondary character in your story about this other person. They're living their own story and they happen to be just the secondary character for this person. So I think it's a matter of making sure that you think about all these characters and you have a little bit of a backstory. You don't need to, need to go to heaps of depth about it, but just a little bit of a backstory about these characters before you start using them in the plot. And even if not a lot of it goes into it, it'll sort of inform the way you write it. Well, it's a very good question. And sometimes they'll just pop out, like they'll just kind of happen. But often I'll think of a character I want to put into a situation almost. And or think of a character that has certain characteristics. So for the clumsy thing where, you know, I'm very clumsy, I did a character who's clumsy and then going, well, what situations can I put this character in that'll bring out that clumsiness? And you want to go opposites. You don't want to put a clumsy character, lots of stuff is happening and falling around. You want mm -hmm. him somewhere where it's meant to be quiet and calm and discreet and all that sort of thing. And then once you do, once I do that, when I'm just playing around and the other traits start coming out that, you know, he wants to help people, but he's always so clumsy. And so then you've got this, all these different things come out. So certainly physical characteristics happen quite early when I'm doing characters mm -hmm. and, and how they act and how they move and lots of things. And so in one I've done, for example, Fart Boy, that was, we, we knew the character was going to be, have this fart power. But picking up what the character was before, you know, was the opposite. So who would not want to have this power? The cleanest kid in the world. 
And so he's <laughs> never gross, he's always clean. So thinking up, doing opposites is really good for then going, okay, now I know how that character's gonna react when these things happen. So mm -hmm. it's almost just having a basis of the character and then just throwing them into situations and almost seeing how they react. They almost tell you sometimes what their characteristics are by, by how they respond to situations. It's one of the characters I love just has the characteristics I would wanna have. So I just sort of wrote my ideal me and how I would respond if I was the ideal person, how I would respond. And, yeah, definitely, it's thing, it's thing to see, but often it's more almost like an amalgamation of people I know might become one character, I mm. think. So it's not always, you know, this character like here is- different like, traits. Exactly, exactly. So it's not like this character's like Sunshine, and so it's just gonna be like, hey, it's, it's, yeah, a bit might be like Sunshine, but a bit might be like me, and then it mixes. And then a really cool thing that I got taught by at a Robert McKee seminar is, the support characters are there to bring out characteristics of the main character. So he might be, she might be nervous around their boss, but they might be confident when they're playing sports with their teammates, or they might be something else when they're running, or whatever it is. Hmm. And then the goal of the story is then to have a, you know, build up to a scene where maybe they're confident with their boss and they stand up to them because but then the boss is going to bring out or these different support characters bring out these different traits of the character so that is a way for the character to develop as well and almost to work out who the character is by having good support characters as well mm -hmm. and the support characters are more often drawn from people that i know than the main character because they're the nasty one <laughs> Thank you so much to our authors. You're wonderful today. And it was really interesting hearing about how you create characters. I love the topic of characters. I could literally talk about it all day. I really like them, they're really fun. And it's nice to know that other people get really excited about them too. It's not just me. I like that everybody has a different way of creating their characters. Like some people, they use the world around the character to help develop the character and build the personality from there. I like that some of the characters just kind of pop into being. I like that some of the characters, there's a, a big intricate background that's created for them and this influences their personality. I particularly like this one because this is what I do with my artworks. So I give my characters a background and I give them a story and then how that story happens to be influences how the character looks and how the character acts. So it's kind of nice that there's a bit of a correlation between how some writers write and how some illustrators illustrate. It's really nice. Anyway, that is my thoughts. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Now, next week's episode is all about world building. So basically what this is about is creating worlds and how our authors go about doing that. And I'm quite excited about it because it kind of filters through the character building stuff into building more of the world stuff. It's going to be great. If you are an aspiring writer, please make sure you go check out our author's pages because they have some pretty nifty stuff there, which is really helpful. So go have a look. I have linky linked that below. As always, you can find my work on Instagram and Facebook, and I am still twitching at 8 p.m. on a Friday night, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Now, I have started a Discord server, so if you're interested in Discord, come chat to us. I will put the link here somewhere below. From me and all of my authors today, yeah. thank you so much Bye. for being here. It's been awesome and we will chat to you all very soon.